Okay. I uh, hope uh, you have understood the previous two lectures, that is uh, the prerequisite set theory and basics of machine. Okay. So in our previous lecture, <coughs> we have seen two machines. One is basic machine, which has only input and output. And the second is FSL, finite state machine. Okay. Hope uh, what is state is clear to you people. Uh, students, am I audible and uh, my uh, screen is visible, I suppose? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we'll start with our next topic. Okay, from now, whatever we look into will be in your examination point of view. That is, till now, we have seen just introduction to the topic, introduction to the machine and all. So from today, we'll start designing the machine. Okay, so first and foremost, the first machine that you will be learning is finite automata. First, we'll see what is finite automata. Finite automata is mathematical model of finite state machine. These are machines that mimic a computer by providing a medium which executes a finite set of instructions sequentially. That is whatever we give this instruction to the machine, only that will be uh, executed sequentially. Okay, it will have the input and it will produce the output as accepted or not. That is, it gives, we give the input to the machine as a string. Okay, the machine gives the output, whether the string is accepted by the machine or not. One thing here you have to remember very important is that uh, the finite automata takes the string, okay, and it gives the output as accepted, the string is accepted or rejected, okay? And um, one more thing you have to remember is for every problem statement, we will be designing finite automata, okay? For every given problem statement, we'll be designing separate automate, uh, finite automata. Okay, you'll understand as we go into the example. Okay, so we'll see what all we'll be learning, what, how finite automata can be categorized. Finite automata can be categorized as into two. One is finite automata without output. Another is finite automata without. Okay, in finite automata without output, we'll be learning deterministic finite automata, which is called as DFA, and non-deterministic finite automata, NFA. Okay, and then we'll be learning finite automata with output, that is Moore machine and Milli machine. Okay, so before going to DFA, NFA, Moore machine and Milli machine, we'll solve few examples on finite automata, okay? And finite automata, if I say finite automata, you can consider it as DFA, that is deterministic finite automata, okay? Deterministic finite automata can also be said as finite automata, but NFA is not FA. You have to remember this and you have to uh, concentrate on this okay so we'll move on to the formal definition of finite automata every machine has its own fire uh, formal definition okay every machine has its own formal definition what is this formal definition every machine uh, is defined with some tuples every machine is defined with some tuples. These are known as tuples. I'll explain it uh, now. Okay, so formal definition of uh, finite automata is 
q summation delta q0 and f someone has kept your mic on okay so m is equal to q summation delta q0 f what is this q q is finite set of states okay q is finite set of states summation is finite set of input what are the inputs that a string can take q is set of states states i think you have understood what are states like uh, for switch we had taken uh, two states right one is on and off okay and for the game that we saw we uh, took three states stand jump and run okay depending on the problem statement we'll define what are the states required okay depending on the problem statement we will see or uh, depending on the state uh, what is that uh, the strings given in the problem state statement will uh, define what should be the input okay uh, this is delta i'll just come to this later what is this q0 q0 is the start state there is only one start state for every machine okay q0 is the start state that is from where the input reading starts from which state the input reading starts that is start state f f is set of final state finite set of final states there may be more than one final state one or more than one you should have at least one final state in the finite machine okay but there may be more than one final state what is this final state if the string reaches the the final state then the string is accepted then the input is accepted otherwise the input is rejected to know that we should have final state okay next i said what is this delta delta is transition function okay delta is transition function if i have a current state on which input the machine changes the state and to which state it goes in the previous example as we saw in the simple example that is our switch what did we see if the state is on and if i give the input push then it will go to the next state what is that off right so that is given in delta function or i uh, will usually call it as transition function what is this transition function see this is your q is your current state right if i say um in our previous example this is my on on mapped with okay this x is known as mapped with on mapped with input okay our input was push right so on mapped with input push gives you next state what is this next state if this is on and my input is push if my next state is off i hope you are understanding this will be more clear when we move on to our example okay so students now we'll directly move on to our first example of finite automata okay that is designed finite automata to accept decimal number divisible by 3 design finite automata to accept decimal number divisible by 3 since this is our first example and i'll go very slowly okay and after that we'll go a bit fast okay the first ever example design finite automata to accept decimal number divisible by 3 okay 
first and foremost, first and foremost, what you have to see, we have to understand the problem statement. Okay, before going into formal definition, we have to understand the problem statement. Okay, so first thing we have to see which machine we have to design. We have to design finite automata. So this is our first example, we are designing finite automata. But once you have finished with the uh, uh, automata theory, you'll be learning many examples, many uh, machines, right? So first thing you have to see is which machine we have to design. So here they have given finite automata. Okay, the next thing they have given here is the input is decimal number, right? See, to accept decimal number. So what is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is we have to give the input as decimal number. And what the machine should do? Once the any decimal number is given, it has to check whether this number is divisible by three or not. Is the problem statement clear, students? Is the problem statement, statement clear? Are you understanding what I'm teaching? students okay so fine so we'll start uh, solving it so students uh, whenever a machine is given you have to follow few steps okay i'll be explaining that also by, um, what steps you have to follow Okay, uh, usually these machines are asked for 10 marks. So to get that 10 marks, you have to follow all these steps. What is step one? Step one, you have to write the question, the problem statement. To design finite automata to accept the decimal number, which is divisible by three. Okay, this is your step one. What is step two? You have to write the formal definition of this machine, okay? Finite automata is abbreviated as FA. Okay, so we have to write formal definition for FA. So just now we saw what is formal definition of FA. That is state, input, transition function, start state, and final state. Okay, so coming to our uh, problem. What it is? we have to accept the decimal number which is divisible by three right so now students tell me since it is a decimal number so what should be the input what are the digits that are accepted by the machine from zero to nine yes very good so our input will be zero to nine. Very good. So what will be my summation? In summation, what should I give? What are the digits that are accepted by our machine? So it is since it, it is decimal number, what we'll write one to, sorry, zero to nine. Okay, any doubt in this? No, yeah. Okay. I hope there is no doubt since it is decimal number, all the number will have any one of this, right? Any one or any one or more uh, digit from this input. So I the input cannot have other than zero to nine. Okay. So that is our in uh, that is our summation that is input now we'll see uh, students i hope you know how uh, the div uh, division or uh, the division takes place okay if i take an example of <coughs> 43 okay divisible by 3 okay so 3 1 is Three, right then there is a remainder one here right after that with one, this one 
we take this right we read one by one we read one digit at a time right pehle humne ye read kiya 3 1 is 3 4 minus 3 is 1 then after that we took this so now we have after one we have 3 that is 13 right then 4 12 13 sorry remainder is 1 okay similarly i'll take another example 3 i'll take simple 12 okay so first digit i'll take 1 0 3 remainder is 1 then i'll take 2 okay then it is 1 followed by 2 So, four is twelve. Remainder is zero. Okay, students. Now tell me which number is divisible among these two? Forty-three or twelve? Which number is divisible? Twelve. Twelve is divisible. How did you decide? Yes, very good. Remainder Ruchi. is zero. Yes, right. If remainder is zero, then we say that the number is divisible, right? If the remainder is something other than zero, then we say that the number is not divisible. Okay, this same logic will apply to our machine. Okay, so now depend since depending on remainder. we decide whether the number is zero or not sorry the number is divisible or not depending on the remainder we decide whether the number is divisible or not so what are the possible remainders then when a number is divisible by 3 what are the possible remainders what are the possible remainders when a number is divisible by 3 क्या क्या रिमाइंडर हो सकते हैं जब एक नंबर डेसिमल नंबर थ्री से डिवाइड होता है तो व्हाट आर द पॉसिबल रिमाइंडर्स वन टू एंड जीरो कार्तिक सेस वन टू एंड जीरो व्हाट अदर सेस जीरो वन ओनली जीरो यशस्वी मैम ओनली जीरो व्हाई ओनली जीरो because then only it will be visible divisible now yes. that's why yes when the number is div divided by 3 when the number is divided by 3 what are the possible remainders okay ma'am then it will be 0 1 yes. and 2 yes yes uh, i think um, my question was wrong uh, I, i wanted to ask you people when the number is divided by 3 what are the possible remainders okay so we may have zero we may have one or we may have two right we may have this three we cannot have more any other than this right and if i have zero then we will say that the number is divisible by three okay so this will become my states the possible remainders will become my states okay and for that i'll just stop this things we have done with this okay so now what will be my state my c what are the possible remainders what we did what we said the remainder may be 0 remainder may be 1 remainder may be 2 so what i'll do i'll name this as q0 i'll name this as q1 and i'll name this as q okay what is my q0 my q0 will be what is my q0 my q0 will be remainder 0 what will be my q1 my q1 will be remainder 1 what 
what will be my q2 my q2 will be remainder two. students did you understand how did we design our states from where did we get the states is this clear okay so what will be my yes, q now my q will be q0 q1 q2 you have to write this okay you have to write this q what is q0 q1 q2 okay so we have done with q we have done with summation now we have done with q we have done with summation delta we'll see a bit later okay what will be my start state see whenever we uh, i'll write it again okay whenever we start whenever we start okay i can take a state as qs also okay as a start state separately as a start state okay i think uh, that will be better i take a state start state here okay okay q0 is the remainder 0 q1 is remainder 1 to start with i'll take a start state qs okay i can uh, write this as initial state or start state okay is also called as initial state don't confuse with the um what it says it is it is also called as initial state okay so this is done okay so q i have to change even here right we have four states qs q0 q1 q2 i have to start the machine from one of the state so that i have named as qs okay so what will be my q0 now so q0 will be qs what is q0 q0 is from which state we have to start okay so we are starting our this machine from qs okay final state which is our final state what is required divisible by 3 and we have found that when the remainder is zero okay when the remainder is zero then the machine uh is the string is accepted or the string is divisible by 3 right are you getting students when the remainder is zero of a decimal number then we say that the number is divisible the remainder is zero is in q0 state so q0 will be my final state uh students is there any doubt till now so now we are designing the machine and now we have found what is q summation q0 and f is there any doubt till now students is there any doubt clear ma'am clear okay so we'll move on then now this is my step 2 now we'll move on to step 3 okay step 3 is our transition function what is transition function q with summation gives uh what is that q okay so now for this what we have to do okay we have to draw a state table we have to draw a state table okay what the state table consists of the state table consists of input and the states input okay input and the states okay so we'll write it one by one 
Okay, what are the states? Uh, sorry, what are the inputs that we'll be writing here? I think it's better. I will uh, write it. Okay, what are our states? So, zero, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, this is the state table we are drawing. This is your step three. Okay, so. This is my input. Here we'll be writing input, and here we'll be writing the states QS, Q0, Q1, Q2. All the states that we have written here. Okay, which is our start state? QS is our start state and QS is re uh, represented with the arrow. Start state is represented with the arrow. Okay. And final state is Q0. Final state is represented with the star. You have to remember all these conventions. Okay, students. And you have to show this. If you don't show start state, if you don't show final state, you'll lose marks. You have to remember this. Okay, is this clear? Okay, here you'll be writing the input, whatever input we have taken, and here we'll be writing the states, all the states that we have written in Q, Q S, Q zero, Q one, Q two. You have to mark the start state, and you have to mark the final state. Okay, fine. Now we will be start uh, filling this. Okay, how to fill this? I am in a start state. Means I have read nothing. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I'll take some example and we'll start filling it. Okay. You'll understand it better. Okay. So, I'm in a start state. Means I have read nothing and I'm reading a zero. Okay, I am in a star state. I have read nothing and I'm reading a zero. So three zeros are zero. What is the remainder? Zero, right? These are all remainders. You have to remember this. These are all remainders, right? So what is the remainder? Zero. When I read a zero, when I read a zero, what is the remainder? It is zero. So zero is represented in Q0. So I'll go to Q1. Okay, now I'm in start state. See how students are feeling. I am in start state and I read a one. Abhi hum ye nahi lenge. Okay. I'll map this QS with zero and write the next state. I'll map QS with one and write the next state. Map QS with two and write the next state. QS with three, write the state. QS with four, write the state. QS with five, write the state. Okay, so QS with one. So if I have one at the start, if I have one at the start, so Q zero is zero and remainder is one. What is my remainder? My remainder is one and one is represented in Q one. Okay, so sorry, here Q zero is written. Here Q one. So it goes to Q one. 
If at the start I have two, if at the start I have two, then Q zero is a zero, sorry, three zeros are zero, remainder is two, right? Remainder two, remainder two is in Q2. So right here, Q2. Is this clear students? Are you getting this? Okay, if I have three at the start, that is if I have three, 42. So three, one's a three, right? And remainder is zero again, right? Three is divisible by three, so it is remainder is zero. So where we should go, what I should write here? What should I write here, QS on three? What should I write? QS on three? Q zero. Q zero, right? Because remainder is zero. Very good. So it should be Q zero. Okay. So tell me now, QS on four. What is the remainder? QS on four. What is the remainder? What should I write? Q1. Very good. Very good. So it is Q1. Similarly, 5. It is Q2, right? Again, 6. 6 is divisible by 3. So remainder is 0. So it will be Q0. Right? QS on 7. 3, 2, are 6. So remainder is 1. Q1. QS on 8. So it is Q2. And here you'll have 9 is divisible Q0. Okay? Okay? Fine. So I hope this row is clear, students. Is this row clear, students? Okay. So now coming to this. What do you mean by Q0? Q0 means, students, please mute yourself. Q0 means zero remainder. Please, Hitesh, mute yourself. Okay. Okay, fine. Q0. What do you mean by Q0? What we have taken? We have taken remainder 0, right? So, when there is remainder 0, we will be in Q0. Okay? So, what I'm uh, what I'm reading here, it is 0, 0. I'll be reading here 0, 1. I'll be reading here 0, 2. 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8, and 0, 9. Okay, since I'm reading 0, 0, it is same as QS. It is Q0. Right? Since I'm reading 0, 1, it will be same as QS. Q1, 0, 2, Q2. Okay, and so this row will be same because we are reading here zero. Since here we are reading zero, zero, one, two will be same as the previous as QS. Okay, so I'll fill this later. First, we'll move on to this. What is this Q1? What do you mean by Q1? Q1, we have defined it as remainder one. Okay. We have defi defined Q1 as remainder 1. Means here I have 1. When I have 1 remainder, I'll be in Q1. Okay. So what I'll be reading here to fill this, what I'll be reading here, I'll be reading 1, 0, 10, 1, 0, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 12, 1, 3, 13, 1, 4, 14, 1, 5, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19, and so on. Is this clear, students? Are you getting? Since Q1, when I am in Q1, when there is remainder 1. See in this example, 3 divided by 0 ho gaya yaha pe remainder 1. So now here I am in Q1. With this 1, I'll be carrying this 4. So here we are reading 14, means 1, 4, 14. I hope you are getting this, okay? So here, what will be the remainder? What should I write here? This is 1, 0. What should I write here? What should I write here? Is it Q1? Yes, 10, 10 divided by three, remainder is one. So here we'll have Q1, very good, wonderful students. Very good, you are understanding, right? Next is one, one, 11. 11 when divisible by three, what is the remainder? It is Q2, right? Two is the remainder and two remainder we have written in Q2, so it is cute. 1, 3, third, oh, sorry, 1, 2, 12. 12 when divided by 3. What is the remainder? The remainder is 0, right? 3, 4 is 12. Remainder is 0. 0 remainder we have uh, defined in Q0. So we'll be writing here Q0. I hope you are getting this, students. I hope you are getting this, okay? Then 13, 1, 3, 13, 1, 3, 13, 13 when divided by 3, it is Q1. 1, 4, 14, so it is Q2. 1, 5, 15, 15 is divisible by 3, so it is Q0. Okay? So, and so on. You have to fill it so on. Okay. So now coming to Q2. What is the meaning of Q2? Q2 matlab remainder 2. So what I'll be reading here students? What I'll be reading here? What do you mean by Q2 0? Q2 on 0? What is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of Q2 on 0? 20. Very good. Very good. Right? It is Q2 on 0 means 20. 20 when divisible by 3. What is the remainder? It is 6 the 18. So 2 is the remainder. And 2 remainder, we have named it as Q2. So it will be Q2. Okay? Students, did you get this? Any doubt in this? So that I have already written here. So I'll not write it again there. Okay, here I have not taken QS. Here in this, I have not taken QS. The reason is, the reason is QS and Q0 is same in decimal number. In number system, zero and null is same, right? Students, are you getting? In number system, zero and null is same, right? QS matlab null, I have read nothing null and q0 matlab i am reading zero so zero and null is same so even if you don't write this is okay you can directly write q0 q1 q2 in number system if the string is a number if the input sorry not string sorry if input is a number if the problem statement is a number system that is decimal number, maybe binary or any other number. Then you can take Q0 directly as start state. Okay, so here if you see, I have taken Q0 directly as the start state. So what will be my Q here? If you see, what will be my start state? Start state is just Q0. Okay, there I have taken QS as my start state. In this example, I have taken Q0 as my start state. Okay, so what will be my Q? Q will be just Q0, Q1, and Q2. 
and Q0 is my initial state as well. Okay, so here on the same basis, if you see, I have filled the table. This is my state transition table. This is my state transition table. Is the transition table, state transition table clear? Students, you have you should understand this. If you have any little doubt, maybe very silly doubt, you can ask me. <coughs> if you have any any chotas or doubt be, you can ask me. This is clear. Very good. Very good. Everyone is clear. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now see this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. On what basis we have taken this? We have taken the states on the basis of remainder 0. The possible remainders are 0, 1, 2. Right. Okay. So now if you see this, if you see this table, see this. When Q0 is divided by 0, when Q0 is divided by 3, when Q0 is divided by 6, when Q0 is divided by 9, you have Q0, 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 Q0. When Q1 is divided by 0, it is Q1. When Q1 is divided by 3, it is Q1. When Q1 is divided by 6, it is Q1. When Q1 is divided by 9, it is Q1. What I mean is, 0, 3, 6, and 9 has same states. See here, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q0, Q1, Q2. All three are same, right? Okay. For example, yaan pe, for example, yaan pe Q2 hota. Okay. Hai nahi, but hota. Then this 0, 3, 6, 9 are not same. Okay. Only 3, 6, 9 are same. 0 is not same. Okay. But here, since 0, 3, 6, 9, all 3 has same states. See this. Q0, Q1, Q2, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q0, Q1, Q2. Why is they are same? Because 0, 3, 6 and 9 when divided by 3 gives the same remainder. That is 0. So, they are same. Similarly, if you see Q1, Q2, Q0, 1 gives Q1, Q2, Q0, then 4 gives Q1, Q2, Q0, 7 gives Q1, Q2, Q0. Why they give same? Because all these 3, 1, 4 and 7, when divided by 3, gives the same remainder 1. Okay? And if you see, two and then with that if you see five and eight the remainders are same the states are same so what can we do instead of writing such a big table what we can do we can directly write we can combine those things okay if you don't understand combining this directly you can write this, you can write this, and then combine it. Okay, students, even if you write this and leave it, there is no problem at all. Okay, no need of combining if you are in the confusion. Konsa konsa combine karna hai. Okay, combine konsa karna hai. I am repeating it again. The digits which has same remainder can be combined together. The digits with same remainder can be combined together. 0, 3, 6, 9 when divided by 3 gives you 0 remainder. 1, 4, 7 when divided by 3 gives you remainder 1. 2, 5, 8 when divided by 3 gives you remainder 2. So we can combine them together. Okay, and how to write it? We can write it with a single state, because it's the same. Hai. 0, 3, 6, 9 ka same. Hai. 0, 3, 6, and 9. Q0, Q1, Q2. So that we have written here. Q0, Q1, Q2. 1, 4, 7 ka same. Hai. 
Q1, Q2, Q0. Q1, Q2, Q0. Q1, Q2, Q0. That we have written here. Q1, Q2, Q0. Okay. Similarly, 2, 5, 2. Is this clear? Simply, this is known as clear, simplified state table. If you don't understand, if you are in confusion, you no, need not write this. You can direct, write this and leave it. But it is better to write this because depending on this, we have to write, we have to draw a diagram. Okay, in the next step. Is the simplification clear? Is the simplification clear, students? Any doubt in this? Students, any doubt in this? Okay. Fine. So, this was our step three. This was our step three. Okay. So, what is our next step? Next step is you have to draw transition diagram. Okay, I'll just show you how to draw the transition. Okay, so Q0, okay, our next step is draw the transition diagram. What, is, what it is, what it is, Q0, how we read this? How we read this state table? Q0 on input 0, 3, 6, 9 transits to Q0. Q0 on input 0, 3, 6, 9 transits to Q0. Or in our lame language, we say that Q0 goes to Q0 on 0, 3, 6, 9. Okay? Q0 goes to Q0 on input 0, 3, 6, 9. Okay? ये हमें अभी represent करना है ऐसे हर एक को हमें diagram में graphical representation करना है okay so q0 on 0, 0369 goes to q0 so start with the start state okay start with the start state my start state is q0 right q0 goes to goes to Q0 goes to Q0. Q0 self loop. Q0 goes to Q0 on input 0. You have to write the input on the arrow. Okay. Q0 goes to Q0 on 0, 3, 6, and 9. 0, 3, 6, and 9. If you see, see here, Q0 goes to Q0 on 0, 3, 6, 9. Okay, next. Q0 goes to Q1 on 1, 4, 7. Q0 goes to Q1. That is new state. Q0 goes to Q1. Q0 goes to Q1 on input one see this is my transition right you have to write the input on that transition one four seven okay for every state we have three transitions one two three q zero on two five eight goes to q2 again a new state so draw another state q2 draw another state q2 right Q0 goes to Q2 on, what is it? 2, 5, and 8. Okay? And how to represent the start state and the final state? Q0 is my start state. So, represent it with the arrow. All these are very important. 
you have to remember this okay so this is my start state so i'm giving a arrow to this this not any of the other see a single arrow right coming from no other states it represents that it is a start state okay and what is my final state what we have decided q0 is my final state so how to represent it represent final state with double circle okay so this is done with q0 aise hi hame q1 aur q2 ke liye bhi karna hai q1 and q2 ke liye bhi karna hai so that becomes your this diagram if you see this is the start state so there is a arrow and double circle because it is a final state is the transition diagram clear this is your step 2 transition diagram okay we have to fill all this q1 on 0369 goes to q1 q1 on 0369 goes to q1 q1 on 147 goes to q2 q1 on 147 goes to q2 q1 on 258 goes to q0 q1 on 258 goes to q0 similarly we have to also draw for q three arrows for q okay just imagine if we draw the uh, transition diagram for this it will be a mess right because we have three states but we have to draw q0 on 0 goes to q0 aise hi q0 on 3 goes to q0 aise hame kitne arrows nikalne padenge right so instead of that we can directly combine it we can combine it and draw a simpler transition diagram i hope this is clear students till step 4 is this clear any doubt till step 4 any doubt till step 4 even if you have a single small doubt you can make it clear itself if this example is clear it will be easy for you people to understand more examples okay so if this is clear our last step is we have to verify our machine whether it is right or wrong using example giving example we have to check whether our machine whatever we have designed is right or wrong okay how to do that how to do that i'll take a simple example okay 1 4 5 okay we'll check whether this number is divisible or not using our machine whatever we have designed okay so what is our start state start state is q0 so we have to start with q0 what do you mean by we are starting with q0 we are giving this uh, string that is our number decimal number 145 to our machine and the machine has started reading it how the machine reads the um, uh, given decimal number digit by digit right so we have given the table for that now what it is reading it is in the start state q0 and it is reading 1 q0 on 1 we will move on to our uh, state table and check q0 on 1 q0 on 1 it is going to q1 okay fine so what i'll write here i'll write here q1 abhi 1 ho gaya read ho ke remaining is 45 now what it will read it will read 4 right so q1 on 4 we'll see q1 on 4 q1 on 4 is going to q2 right see here q1 on 4 is going to q2 q1 on 4 is going to q2 so i'll write here q2 what is remaining remaining is 5 okay so we'll see q2 on 5 q2 on 5 q2 on 5 is q1 
Q2 on phi is Q1. Right? And there is no digit to read. So the machine stops at Q1. If the machine stops at Q1, what we say? The decimal number is not accepted. Or I can say the number is rejected. Okay, the number is accepted only when the uh, machine stops at Q0. Why? Because Q0 is our final state. Okay, is this clear, students? Is this right? Is the remainder 1 when a number is divisible by 3? Agar aapne isko divide kiya to, uh, remainder 1 hi hai kya? See, it stops at Q1. Q1 we have represented as remainder 1, right? If this is right, then you we can say that our machine is whatever we have designed is right. Okay, so here one example you have to give which says the number is not accepted. Similarly, you have to give another example which says the number is divisible to show that the number is divisible. Okay. So what example we'll take? We'll take uh, 165, whether this is divisible. Okay, so start again with Q0, 165. Okay, Q0 on one. Q0 on one is Q1. So Q1, remaining uh, digits are 65. Q1 on 6. Q1 on 6 is Q1. So Q1, remaining digits are 5. Q1 on 5. Q1 on 5 is Q0. Okay, Q0. There is no other digit to read here, right? And the machine has stopped at Q0. So what we can say? The number is accepted. Is this clear how to verify it using example? And you have to write this as your last step, that is step five. You have to show this. Okay, take any number and show a number which is accepted. Take any number and show a number which is rejected or not accepted. Okay, this is how you have to write your example or write solve the any given problem. I just uh, just I'll just highlight whatever we have done today. It's already twelve fifteen. Okay, we have word this. Uh, what was the problem statement? Design finite automata to accept decimal number divisible by three. Right. So we uh, saw that we, we have given with finite automata to design finite automata and input is decimal number and we have to check whether the number is divisible by three. Okay, so we uh, then we designed our formal definition, right? We saw uh, that input is decimal number. So our input should be zero to nine, right? And we decided upon the states depending on the possible remainders. That is possible remainders are 0, 1, 2 because they have given 3. Okay. Then we have decided upon the final state since the number is divisible only when remainder is 0 and remainder 0 we have given in Q0. So we have decided upon final state as Q0. And obviously star state will be Q0 because 0 in number system at the left side has nothing. Okay, this was about step one and step two. Then in step three, what did we do? We designed the state table. Okay, we mapped the current state with the input and we gave the next state. With this state table, we draw the transition diagram in our step two. Okay, after step four, what did we do? We verified our uh, machine using examples. 
okay so you have to follow all these steps i hope this example is clear if you have any doubt let me know till then i'll give you the attendance